Hi, scenes. I'm Tony. This is Tabatia. Um, we're in the process of building this boat. She's a, a sailboat, a, a hard chine plywood sailboat. Um, when she's done, she'll be 31 foot 8 officially, probably a little bit longer in practice. Um, schooner, junk rig schooner sailboat. Um, schooner in this case meaning two masts, of which the main mast is, is a bit higher, a bit longer than the forward mast. Junk sails on each mast. And we're in the process of building her, as I say. These videos are, are basically a record of the process of the build. Um, and let's have a look at what we've done this week. First thing we did is that we've glassed the top sides or glassed the, the, the cabin sides, the bulwarks and the cabin sides uh, on both sides. And I'm not going to show you much of it because I've been showing you a lot of glassing recently, a couple of quick shots of the process, but we did this a bit differently, or I did this a bit differently, in that I hung the glass like wallpaper. That means um, one meter wide vertical sheets of it instead of a, a non-stop strip around there. Um, thinking there was, one, it's fairly easy to do it that way. And secondly, because it's above the water, I didn't think the joints would be any issue. Um, so, and also I read in the book about building badger. I think they, um, I think they say in that that they actually did the entire hull wallpaper fashion, basically due to the fact that they didn't glass it before they rolled it over, which frankly is a bit of a strange idea. But um, anyhow, I hung it as wallpaper, one meter wide sheets, as we worked our way around, and it's come out well. Obviously needs a little bit of filler where the, where the fiberglass sheets overlap, although uh, the feel tells you quite a lot and it's pretty good. A very, very light fill will have that smooth. Looking good. Um, it's all done with the exception of about a couple of meters on the aft boards where I ran out of glass. Um, so basically this means that all of the, the bulk of the glassing is done now. Uh, so I ran out of glass, but I've ordered some more. It's arrived now. So hopefully today I'm planning to get in there and just finish off those last couple of little bits on the aft bulwarks, which would be lovely. And then, then the hull is glassed anyhow. Still got the, the forward hatch to do, which will be a bit of glass in, and that, still that um, deck box on the port side, which will be a bit of glass in. But, but we're coming to the end of the glassing work, and that is very, very good.
Yeah, then we got up on this um, main deck and I cut two holes. This hole here for the, for the deck hatch, which has come out very nicely. And I don't know if, can you see that Kerry? Back here, if I move that out of the way, this hole here, you see that? For the main mast. So the main mast, let's deal with that first of all. So the main mast took a bit of measuring. It's, it's kind of important that it, you feel it's in the right place, but a careful measuring. And what I did to make sure we're centered um, above the, the keel step is that I drilled a small hole through first and hung a, a plumb bob from that hole to make sure that was above the point in the keel of the boat that, that I want the mast to sit on. Um, once I was happy with that, then used the router to cut the hole there. And it's come up very well. I've sealed it now with a couple of coats of epoxy. Looks like it needs a sand, but it's looking pretty good. And then this main, this, this deck hatch, um, cut the hole with the jigsaw. And uh, I made up this, this plowed plinth. The thing about this hatch, of course, is, is that this, let's have a look, this hatch here will fit in there, like that. Um, and these have to sit flat. And obviously we've got this deck crown on the deck. Um, so you need this piece to, to, take, to take that crown out so it's sat flat. And you see now that this hatch is sat nice and flat on there. Um, so I cut out two pieces out of ply um, with the thinking that because it's, it's cut out of one piece of ply or two pieces of ply laminated together, but there's no joints in the corner. So there's nothing that can open up with the movement of wood. Um, cut those out. I've epoxy glued them in place and uh, obviously cleaned it up, got a bit of a, a smoothen up around about sand and then fiberglass them. I'm going to fill it around the around the joint there where it joins the deck, glassed over that. So it's sealed, should stay there, um, should be durable. And the hatch is going to screw down onto that. I've got the screws now, so this weekend, hopefully, a load of sealant under that and get it screwed down. Uh, good, that's where we are there, it's cut.
Yeah, I thought this might be interesting because these are the two pieces that we cut out. So um, this is the piece that was cut out for the main hatch. And if you can get in on there, focusing. Mm, I hope so. Yeah. No You'll gaps. see, I turn it around, there are no gaps. It looks absolutely lovely. There are no gaps anywhere in there. Very nice lamination. It's four sheets of 10 mil ply, so 40 mil thick, obviously laminated together at the partners area, no gaps. This is the one that came out for the main hatch, two pieces of 10 mil ply laminated together. Run up the edge of there. Also, no sign of any voids anywhere on that. It looks perfect. That's very nice. It's time. For Tony's tool tip, we haven't had one of these for ages. That's a little pause. A couple of you lovely people actually commented that you, you missed the tool tips and, and uh, that's very, very nice of you. Um, we're not going to have a tool tip every week. <laughs> I don't think there's enough to say, but, but there was something that I wanted to talk about. So, and recently I had a comment from, from one of you lovely people who said, you know, tool tips, please. So. Let's do a tool tip. I wanted to talk a bit about sanders. And there's a point to this. And the point to this is that you, know, you can have 
the most marvellous workshop full of tools in the world. It, is, it will be lovely, I'm sure. You know, you see some YouTube's videos of people showing you their workshop and they've got every machine tool you can imagine. And, and you're a bit envious. I'm envious when I watch. It's delightful. But here's the thing. If you want to build something like this and you're not a person of significant means, you can either spend your money on tools or you can spend your money on the boat. You can't have both. So you, you've got to make do with ordinary tools and not too much money spent on tools. So you've got enough money left to build your boat. Um, and I think the point of these tool tips, you know, going back to the very beginning, has been that you can do this sort of work with fairly ordinary kit. You don't need high tech, mega expensive equipment, even though I'm sure it'd be nice to have and might make the job a little bit easier, but you can manage with fairly regular tools. So, recently we've been doing an ever such a lot of sanding, hell of a lot of sanding. So let's talk about sanders very briefly because I have mentioned sanders before and something I've learned along the way, along the course of this job has changed my thoughts on sanding a bit. I've learned two things about sanding actually. Let's start. This is not very exciting. Look at that, it's a cork block. It's your cork sanding block. You wrap a bit of sandpaper around it. As I've told you before, I only, <laughs> I only ever use 80 grit. Everything I use is 80 grit. Unless I were finding, I was sanding something of you know a gloss finish or something, trying to get it really flat, then I'd go finer. But for general purpose, sanding 80 grit does everything for me. So I use it. Very cheap cork block, bit of sandpaper, lovely. Next step up from that is your 3M sanding block. Now this came from uh, quite a while back. In the course of these videos, one of you viewers gave me a tip to buy one of these, and I did and I could buy three or four more. They're brilliant. The 3M sanding block. You just wrap it. It's got nails in there. You just wrap a bit of sandpaper around, push that down to push the sandpaper onto the nails and it holds it tight and it is excellent for sanding. Really, really good. And I sand a lot with this. Edges of boards, corners. Very, very good indeed. Okay. When I'm doing bigger areas, Sometimes I do bigger areas with this, depending on how I'm feeling, really. A bit of help with my mood of the day. Sometimes bigger areas with that. Sometimes I get the old trusty Bosch orbital sander out. I've had several of these over the years, but this one's lasted me a few years now. Hangs in there. I've just had to replace this pad, which is a very expensive game. These pads cost almost half the price of the entire sander really which is a bit of a scam but but there you go just replaced it um, other than that I don't use the Bosch sanding discs I use use you know, generic ones um, no names and they're fine as long as, as long as the velcro is all right they're fine great tool because it, it it's, it's orbital and it rotates in a kind of random pattern so it doesn't leave scratch marks or at least not big ones dust filter on it as well nice indoors i use the, the for corners and tricky bits i use the triangular sander same thing these pads wear out these pads on the triangular wear out quicker than on the orbital so i change these quite often luckily they're not quite as expensive as those um, same thing don't use the bosch pads uh, sanding triangles but they're great and the other thing, this is what I've learnt along the way. Last time I spoke about the, the angle grinder, still got the old Metabo angle grinder, which is a brilliant tool. Last time I spoke about this, I said you can use this for sanding, and I said I use those flappy sanding discs. And somebody commented that he used the flat sanding discs. And I thought, well, that's uh, interesting. So I bought some. They're much cheaper than the flappy ones, and much better. And that is rare, isn't it? That something's cheaper and better. They're much better, much, much better. I don't know why I ever used the flappy ones. The, the, the flat sanding disc, brilliant. So it's a great sanding tool and you'll see me, see me using it today. Or you have seen me using it today. Good, there we go. Tony's tool tips, sanders, cut. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching. Um, we've got a long weekend coming up this weekend, so we've got a bank holiday on Monday, so we'll be pushing on with the build, hopefully getting a fair bit done. 
Uh, weather's nice, lovely and warm. I say thanks for watching. Give us your thumbs up, subscribe. If you like what we do, you could chuck a little tip in the tips jar, couldn't you? All right, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>